drowning and she pulled me out of the ocean. Bonjour! This week at the movies, Amy Adams is inspired by Meryl Streep in Julie and Julia. The further we go, the fewer people on the trail. People die out here every year. Mila Jovovich and Steve Zahn go on the vacation from hell in a perfect getaway. You know what? Drop me off right here. Do you live around here? I don't want to tell you where I live. Keep her heart. I, I can't feel a thing. Nothing. I can't feel anything. Also, Oscar-nominated actor Paul Giamatti plays a version of himself in Cold Souls. I just want my soul back. When you flip anything, you've just got to have the courage of your convictions, especially if it's a loose sort of mass, like, oh, that didn't go very well. Pearls. The woman is wearing pearls in the kitchen. I'm Julia Child. Bon appétit! Meryl Streep bon takes on cooking legend Julia Child in Julie and Julia. I'm Ben Lyons from E! Entertainment. And I'm Ben Mankiewicz from Turner Classic Movies. Our first film is not only the story of two women separated by two generations, it's also a tale of two films, one engaging, one self-indulgent. It's Julie and Julia from writer-director Nora Ephron. Story one, Julie, that's Amy Adams, working for the city in 2002 New York in a thankless job overlooking ground zero. Frustrated and whiny, she spices up her life by cooking all 524 recipes in Julia Child's seminal cookbook in one year, then blogging about it. That leads to story two, Julia Child, Meryl Streep, arriving at age 37 with her husband in post-war Paris. Frustrated but delightful, she finds fulfillment on the plate in front of her. What is it that you really like to do? Each. <laughs> I like to do I know. I know. I know. And we are so good at it. Look good at you. At Streep, in what will be the biggest understatement of today's show, steals the movie with a performance full of child's boundless enthusiasm. You should have seen the way those men looked at me. But then they discovered I was fearless. Amy Adams, though a wonderful actress with range, induces the opposite of joy. Julie is wildly self-absorbed. Her husband, played by Chris Messina, even points it out. We're told Julie's love of food and of Julia saved her from a sad, mundane existence. Rather, it merely provides an excuse to engage in rampant self-pity. And I cried, like a small, emotionally disturbed child. I'm a mess. <laughs> Nora Ephron has helmed these types of films before, like Sleepless in Seattle and You've Got Mail. This film also weaves parallel stories together. Here, however, the direction is consistently repetitive. If it weren't for the sheer brilliance of Streep and on-screen husband Stanley Tucci, this would be an easy skip. But they are great enough to lift Julie and Julia to rent it. Well, first off, I think we're both keen observers of the obvious when we say that Meryl Streep yeah. is terrific. She will be, again, the darling of the award show season, surely to be nominated for just a terrific embodiment of this cultural icon. And really quick, and Stanley Tucci, too, oh, who yes. is such an expressive face, can act without speaking. So we agree on that portion of the film. And now I disagree with you about the Amy Adams portion of the film. This is yeah. a true story. So if she is a little whiny, that's the character she's embodying. Oh. And I think Chris Messina it does a terrific job of balancing out that relationship so all the focus isn't just on Amy Adams. Yeah, I don't think he left her soon enough. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I find you're being a little too harsh on a film that is light and warm and is charming at times and she goes through some difficult moments. Look, I, we learned from Charlie Wilson's War and Talladega Nights and Enchanted. I mean, Amy Adams knows what she's doing. Uh, I think the fault here ends up being with Nora Ephron. Every single scene involving Julie, that's Amy Adams. Uh, she uh, hates her job. She cooks some food. She has a tense moment with her husband. She blogs about it. And that happens again and again. She gets to a point when she reaches some personal accomplishments and people start to take interest in her blog and how that changes her life and her relationship her with her friends. Her behavior never changes. Two performances I want to point out. One on screen, one off. Jane Lynch shows up about two-thirds into the film very funny as Julia Child's sister. I enjoyed seeing her in this. I didn't think she added it. Love Jane Lynch. Didn't think she added anything well, Somebody here. who adds something off screen is Susan Spongin. She is the food stylist on the movie. All the food looked delicious. I enjoyed the film. I think you should see Julie and Julia. Next up is Paper Heart. It's a partly scripted, partly improvised movie about the making of a documentary. 
Sound confusing? Well, it is, but it's also a very good film. Actress and comedian Charlene Yee, who might be familiar to audiences from her brief but very memorable appearance in Judd Apatow's Knocked Up, embarks on a cross-country journey to find the true meaning of love. What's a perfect date? You need to take somebody to Applebee's and get them hot wings. Do you remember a movie, but before that you'll watch the sunset on the beach. And the restaurant that you will go to is a French Riviera restaurant that only sells seafood. Yi interviews everyone from strangers on the street to her famous Hollywood friends like Seth Rogen, asking them any and everything about love. She's so likable, it's impossible not to root for her and hope that maybe, just maybe, despite her claim she doesn't believe in true love, she might just find it where she least expects it. What are you guys filming? A documentary. What is it about? It's about me. Um, and, uh, Your life? No, it's about, I don't believe in love. Cool. Awesome. Gonna be interviewed, bud? No. <laughs> Will this be in the movie? The scene? Probably not. Yeah. When she meets actor Michael Sarah, their burgeoning relationship becomes a part of the story. Is their relationship real or put on for the cameras? To me, it didn't really matter. Their chemistry and genuine friendship shines through. What are you gonna get? I think I'm gonna get the Mexican beach salad. I wanna say that to the waiter. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very exotic. Mexican beach salad, yeah. He'll look at me and think, oh, this guy gets around. This is a very personal movie for Yee and director Nick Jasenovic, and their collaboration makes for a unique and endearing little movie. See Paper Heart. Well, it is an inventive movie, no question, and I agree with you that Charlene Yee has a very appealing on-screen persona. All that said, I think it is very significant about whether the relationship with Michael Sarah is real or not. It's not, and that ruined the movie for me. It felt completely inauthentic. Here she is interviewing regular people about love. I thought some nice, genuine moments there, including, as you mentioned, Seth Rogen. Then we see Michael Sarah, every bit as big a star as Seth Rogen, but he is essentially playing a guy named Michael Sarah, who she falls in love with, and I felt sort of gypped, ripped off. And oh, I felt no, I enjoy real seeing their chemistry on screen. I don't no. care if it was put on for the cameras. They have a lot of fun together. As being friends, I love seeing them trying to find some private moments for themselves, running from the cameras and trying to escape but and get some moments scripted. to their it's but not it's real. funny and it's genuine and it's no, warm it's and genuine. the film and the film has a whimsical style to it it's creative and i and i wish more movies like this would be made it's partly experimental they're very creative using puppets to sort of reenact certain Look, moments are, in her life there's a lot to love here there's some to love here and as i said i like charlene yee and i would like to see more movies like this but that key mistake that they made of having this fake relationship with michael Sarah took too much away from the movie, and I think you should skip Paper Heart. Coming up next, Steve Zahn and Mila Jovovich take a trip to paradise in a perfect getaway. And later, Oscar winners Forrest Whitaker and Jennifer Hudson join Dakota Fanning and Kate Beckinsale in a movie that's available right now on DVD, while it's also in theaters. It's Fragments. That's what faith is. Cops in Honolulu released a photo of the killers. Apparently, they didn't know they were on camera. Anybody. Next up, a perfect getaway featuring two attractive couples hiking to a remote beach on the beautiful island of Kauai. One couple is newly married, the other with an engagement pending. Everybody is so in love. Now, I should mention that a third couple has just been brutally murdered in Honolulu by a fourth couple. But that shouldn't affect these four lovebirds. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? How's Sandy? That's Mila Jovovich, saved from certain death by the quick hands of Timothy Oliphant, so brilliant on HBO's Deadwood. Jovovich and her new husband, Steve Zahn, quickly fear Oliphant and his girlfriend, ably played by Kylie Sanchez, may be the murderous duo. So you think it's just a coincidence we were there at the same time on Oahu? Just like Sydney and I were there. There's a lot of people on Oahu when the murders happen. That's the way you look at it. That's exactly how I look at it, Nick. Good. So it would make a hell of an act two twist. Writer-director David Tui is certainly going for camp in the process, but the story gets pretty dull in that first hour. Now, to his credit, the twist is exceptionally good, and it's not out of left field. It works, but I'm afraid it comes too late to save the film. It's not a terrible movie if B-movie campy terror is your thing, but I think you can do better. Skip it. 
I agree with you. A terrific twist, but goes wasted in a movie that really runs out of steam before it even gets to that twist. I don't I, think it really had any steam. And why I like the performers, especially Olafan, who's always got a mysterious side to him and all. He's a good his actor. Work. Very good actor. There are certain holes that do not stand up after the fact. In the moment, you say, oh, that's interesting. But then there's some drug references that are a key element to that twist that are nowhere to be found in the first half or two thirds even of the film. I really think the twist does work in hindsight, but I didn't care enough about those people beforehand. I'm a big Steve Zahn fan, too. Uh, I just don't think there was enough drama in the first two thirds of this movie. And not particularly thrilling or terrifying. Neither one. No. Just sort of beautiful people, beautiful locations. You know that something bad's about to happen, and when it does, you say, oh, I was expecting something terrible to happen. And I agree with you. Not a terrible movie, but after the fact, doesn't hold up. I agree. You can skip a perfect getaway. Coming up next, Paul Giamatti goes on a mission of self-discovery in Cold Souls. And on next week's show, we'll have the exclusive early review of Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, plus the sci-fi thriller District 9. There's a lot of secrets in District 9. I wasn't quite sure about the services provided. We only offer the possibility to de-soul the body or disembody the soul. Believe me, when you get rid of the soul, everything makes so much more sense. Good luck. Next up, Cold Soul, starring the wonderful and accomplished Paul Giamatti as an actor named Paul Giamatti. When the movie opens, we see the performer on the verge of a breakdown. To get his career back on track, he meets with a doctor, played by David Strathairn, who specializes in the extraction of souls. Now, your soul will be stored here, or if you'd rather avoid sales tax, it can be shipped to our New Jersey warehouse. <laughs> uh, no, God, no. I don't want my soul shipped to New Jersey. Definitely an intriguing premise for a film, but ultimately the movie strays off course as a plot focusing on the ring of underground soul smugglers between the U.S. and Russia begins to unfold. Giamatti's wife, played by Emily Watson, struggles, as does the audience, with the idea that her husband's soul has gone missing on the black market. You're completely soulless right now. What? No, 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 no. Not exactly, no. I still have 5% of my soul. 5%? But I rented the soul of a Russian poet. Reminiscent at times of the far superior being John Malkovich, Cold Souls never seems to find its stride or its true voice. Is it funny? Is it thrilling? It doesn't really know. It's dull and methodically told with no real payoff. It's an ambitious effort from Giamatti and director Sophie Bart, but it just falls short. Skip Cold Souls. Ben, you know, I found myself thinking about this movie for a long time after I got out of the theater. I wasn't entirely sure how I felt uh, when I left the theater. It's a highbrow concept. And I really ultimately love the idea that this big, giant philosophical question, the nature of a person's soul, that it can be broken down as a commodity that can be extracted, shipped, and stored in New Jersey. And traded on the black and market. And then traded on the black market. I agree market with you. A Russia. terrific uh, premise, but I'm not so sure about about the execution of the film when you have a film that's dealing about people's souls and trading souls the movie's got to have a soul it's got to have some heart and some passion behind the lens and i just didn't see that element of the film there and it didn't work for me i think it had enough of what you felt was missing first of all david straight and paul giamatti emily watson i think all give terrific performances i think a lot of sophisticated humor that no one questions none of the characters doubt that you can actually have your soul extracted a new soul put in and it changes who you are uh, i thought that was sort of funny and well played by every single one of the actors they make it seem plausible but i don't think they take it a step further to really make it enjoyable or particularly insightful it's a complicated concept but an inventive film and i think you should see cold souls Dakota Fanning and Oscar winner Forrest Whitaker headline a first-rate cast in our next film, the ensemble drama Fragments from Australian director Rowan Woods. It's the story of the aftermath of a bloody massacre in a small-town California diner and how five survivors struggle to cope with the brutality and suffering they experienced. Congratulations. Lucky number seven is for when you pay. Come on, get Jimmy. Whitaker is wounded, survives, and turns to gambling at Casino Morongo. Fanning watches her father get murdered and immediately finds God. Her pal Jimmy, Josh Hutcherson, gets silent, causing a huge rift between his mother, played by the enormously talented Robin Wiegert, and his father, Oscar nominee Jackie Earl Haley. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. If I keep screaming at that, you pretty soon you're going to start believing it. It's not about that evil. 
It's not about strangers that don't know my boys. Kate Beckinsale is a waitress with a baby who won't stop crying, and she copes by turning to men. And Guy Pierce is a doctor whose mechanism is drugging his wife, whom he loves, then repeatedly saving her. Pierce is good, as usual, but the film is quite literally fragmented. Too much story and too little about each character. We discover what happened in the diner piece by piece, and when it all comes together, it's unsatisfying. There are certainly some strong performances here, but the sum is not nearly as full as its parts. It's in limited release in theaters, but available right now on DVD. Skip fragments. Well, you have to tip your hat to the producers for assembling this all-star cast on a limited budget, not just because they're big names, but because they are talented performers, and I think each scene that they're in really showcases why they are such accomplished actors and why they are the best at, the, at what they do in the business. Seeing Jackie Earl Haley at the top of his game and Forrest Whitaker's character experiences unbelievable highs and lows kept me really engaged in the film. I was waiting for the next scene, and who's going to show up and, and go through something in a character arc, and I thought Guy Pierce and Kate Beckinsale are well fleshed out characters here. No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see it. I mentioned Guy Pierce. I think Jackie Earl Haley is a terrific actor. But as far as what was happening with that character, I didn't really fully understand it. Nor did I fully understand what was happening with Forrest Whitaker, who's undeniably one of the best actors working today. He's a man struggling with and being diagnosed with cancer and then winning money at a casino. He's going through these highs and lows. He's got an interesting relationship with his daughter back at home, Jennifer Hudson, who's trying to track him down. There's a lot going on here, and I really thought it was effective seeing this senseless act of violence through flashbacks throughout the film. It didn't just start the film and then you see how everybody reacts to it. Having it come back and learning about that set, that act of violence provides yeah. a twist in the third act. I thought there's some really good stuff. A tough and gritty, well-acted ensemble piece that I think you should see. Coming up next, the funniest movie of the year so far in our DVD out now. Sir. I'm about to warm up your pistol. You got it, Jobin. So, what? Let's take a look at DVDs out now. My DVD pick this week is the funniest film of the year. Co-writer, director John Hamburg's I Love You Man. Paul Rudd is Peter, a real estate agent engaged to Zoe, played with humor and credibility by Rashida Jones. But Peter's friends, they're all women. Until meeting Sydney, that's Jason Siegel. After some awkward but authentic mandates, a genuine friendship develops. Leftover kukuru. Well, that sounds about as appetizing as, uh, as a, pie, a big pie, a plate of, of dirt or something. <laughs> I'm, I was, I'm kidding. Yeah. I still want to hang out, despite that joke. That was a bad joke. Sweet, sweet I've man. praised this movie a lot on this show, including putting it on my list of the best movies of the year so far. So if you haven't seen it yet, now's your chance. Check out I Love You Man on DVD. It's really funny stuff. Earlier in the show, we reviewed A Perfect Getaway, starring Mila Jovovich. So I wanted to highlight her breakout role. Jovovich co-starred with Bruce Willis and Luke Besson's The Fifth Element back in 1997. Set 250 years in the future, she plays a mysterious girl named Lilu in a world of flying taxi cabs, bad guys led by the sinister Gary Oldman, and a universe on the verge of destruction. Jovovich doesn't have much dialogue, but is entirely captivating nonetheless. Thanks to an engaging and ambitious storyline, the film still holds up some 12 years after its initial release. So I Love You Man will be in stores on Tuesday, and The Fifth Element is available right now on DVD and Blu-ray. Want to know what you can't miss this weekend? Stay tuned. Yeah, my three right, to six. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Closed captioning for After Movies is sponsored by... I already refer to myself as just stacked. Because they used to be up here and now they're down here. Playtex 18-hour bras are more beautiful than ever. With an exciting range of stylish colors and sizes. Playtex, who knows you like we do? This is going to make my other bras jealous. Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award-winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's Magnificent Mile on Water Tower Square. All right, recapping the movies on this week's show. We started things off with Julie and Julia, which I enjoyed, but Meng said to rent it. The hopeless romantic in me says, see Paper Heart. Meng said, skip it. We agree to skip a perfect getaway. I say you can skip Cold Souls. Meng said, see it. And I liked Fragments. Meng did not. Time now for my three to see. At number three, a movie I'm still thinking about weeks later. Orphan is less a horror movie than a psychological thriller. If star Vera Farmiga were more of a platinum blonde, I might even call Orphan Hitchcockian, though considerably bloodier than anything Hitchcock ever made. And I've just undoubtedly made some Hitchcock fans very angry. 
Yeah. At number two, Funny People. Judd Apatow's latest is an impressive combination of a serious look at both mortality and celebrity while maintaining its biting humor. Is it a little too long? Yes. Is it still worth seeing? Absolutely. And at number one, In the Loop, a political satire of the highest order. Want to understand, at least conceptually, how the U.S. and Great Britain bungled themselves into the Iraq War? Go find this exceptionally well-written and sharply performed film from co-writer-director Armando Iannucci. That's it for this week's show. Remember, we're always online, and you can follow us now on Twitter. Go to atthemoviestv.com to find out how. Join us next week for an early review of Brad Pitt in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. Plus, we have Rachel McAdams and Eric Bana in The Time Traveler's Wife. And until then, as always, we'll be at the movies. Nine, nine, nine! Sound good? Yes, sir! You think that I wanted this life, this husband that disappears? Who would want that? Activon Ultra Strength for powerful pain relief. A convenient applicator means no messy creams. Activon, applied directly where it hurts for joint pain, muscle pain, arthritis, and backache. Pay less BOGO. Buy one, get one half off everything. Save now. Feel good. Pay less. Wasteful. Washable. The reusable, machine washable wonder mop. Only from Libman. Nice finger! A wart could get used to this! <laughs> Did it get cold? Dr. Scholl's Freeze Away removes warts fast with as little as one treatment. You'll miss me. Dr. Scholl's Freeze Away.